Ooh, excellent connection. I'll take that. Hmm. There's always a delay. Oh, well. Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite sized pieces. So, today, I just want to do a quick live stream just to talk about some things that we had actually been going over. Let me throw this out here. All right. So, this was our exit strategy. First of all, hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. And the exit strategy that we were talking about. It was a video that we did yesterday, and we talked about uh, the different aspects because Ethereum was going to the moon and everywhere else. So people were, of course, talking about how, oh, this is fantastic because what's going to happen is uh, it's going to be uh, one of those uh, Ethereum is just going to uh, go to the moon forever and it'll never come back down, which is uh, exactly the same thing that I thought in 2017. But of course, here we are again. So the big question was, well, what are you talking about, Rob? Why do we even have to sell anything? First of all, uh, welcome to the live chat, everybody. This will be uh, the first one of many. Just need to set up, just do a little quick setup the right way. So hopefully it all works, works out. Let me, uh, this is what we're gonna talk about today, exit strategy, the one that we had talked about yesterday. But there were some questions that I had gotten, which was, first of all, some people were saying, well, you know, Rob, if you're going to talk about uh, exit strategies and you said that uh, Ethereum is going to go up to 10,000 uh, at some point, then why are you talking about uh, exiting? Because that makes no sense. Why would you get out of the market if you know 100% that it's going to hit $10,000? Well, here's the thing. Uh, it doesn't always work like that. I'm going to explain using a little bit of history. But before we do that, let me jump into the chat, see where everybody else is at. Terrible connection. Nick says terrible connection. That's true. What's it with the connection? Lagging bad. Cell seems to hurry up. Possible to watch. This is a mess. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. What well, is the first one? So what are you going to do? Nothing can be perfect. So let me come over here. There we are. Ah, it's not bad, actually. So the exit strategy that we're taking a look at right now Let's see. No. So the exit strategy that we're talking about now for Ethereum, it all comes down to this. Really, what is it that you think uh, Ethereum is going to go to? Is it going to go to, some people will say 5,000. Some people will just say it's going to go to 2,000. Some people even say it'll go to 27,000, which is one of the many predictions that I had uh, yesterday in yesterday's video. And when I took a look at it, I thought to myself, well, the things that we were talking about was to go to 27,000, a lot of things have to go right. First of all, Ethereum 2.0 has to go off, off without a hitch. There should be no issues whatsoever. Uh, the team has to continue to improve, and uh, we have to see uh, the same thing go about as far as confidence in the program itself from all the different people that are building on it, all the different programmers and whatnot. So, uh, there is that aspect. Then also, if you go to 27,000, the market cap would be enormous. So I just said, why don't we just do this? Let's just keep it at around 10,000 and everybody should be okay. So I put together this exit strategy and the thing to, to me was this. Let me blow this up real quick. So the exit strategy itself, it's all predicated on everything going to $10,000. Now, this is not financial advice. This is, I'm not telling you exactly what to do. This is what I'm going to do. And everybody's situation is different. So if I had to sell at some point, these were the selling points I thought would be a pretty good idea if it doesn't hit all the way to 10,000. So the question then becomes this. If you know it's gonna to go to $10,000, why not just wait until $10,000? Well, I'll tell you exactly why. And it's because of this right here. This was the big run up in 2017. Everybody thought that Bitcoin was going to $20,000. Actually, if you were John McAfee, he thought it was gonna to go to $1 million. So you had different price points. And I was pretty certain at this point that it would hit $20,000, absolutely no problem whatsoever. The problem was, is that it just fell short of that. Actually, it says here 19.5, but I think it was more like around 19.7, 19.8. Someone checked me in the uh, comments section. So if you were going to wait 20,000 
The problem is, is that to get there, you had to wait to that point. And if it didn't hit that point, what do you do? Well, you just wait longer because you think to yourself, oh, well, it'll, it'll go up all the way. There should be no problems. And then, of course, it doesn't happen. So if you were like me, you were sitting here at the top going, ah, it's okay. I'll just wait a little bit. And what happens? It went down to 12,000, actually 15,000, then 13,000, then, then it retraced all the way back up to 15,000, and then it just took a massive dump. So the thing is, even if you are the smartest money out there, nobody can time the tops, nobody can time the bottoms. It just doesn't work like that. So for me personally, I think it's just easier just to do this, just to say, okay, I think I know where it's going, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just like a stair step, I'm going to cash out along the way. And again, it's all predicated on what you think it could potentially be. So for me, this was the exit strategy based on 40 Ethereum. So if I have 40, I'm just going to break it down. I'm going to say, well, I think at some point it'll hit 1,000, and it did, and I'm going to sell 2 Ethereum. Now, of course, some people will say, why do you do that? So you know it's going to go 2,000. Well, do I? Do I really? I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly. I know it will happen. I know it will get up there. But the question always becomes when. So one is take a little bit of profit off the table, and then I can roll that into something else. So then the next part would be 2,000. And I would sell about 10%. And now out of my 40, I would just sell four. And so on and so forth. Now the thing is, I want you to notice something. If you add all these up, 5, 10, that's 15. 4, 19, 20, 21, and 7, it makes 28. So I still got 12. I still got 12 Ethereum because I don't know if it's going to go to 10,000 or 15,000 or 20,000. So I will never sell all of my cryptocurrency. The big thing is, is just to never sell everything and try to take a little profits along the way. So before I get into the CME of Q2, what's going to happen with that and the CBOE, let me jump back here real quick. All right. Crypto Six Foot, Curtis Review, more. HBAR doing great. Yeah, HBAR is doing great. <laughs> One of those many projects that uh, I just can't get into because very smart team behind it, but who knows what's going to happen. Engine looking good, of course. Uh, what else we got? When Mullet. I didn't see it. Czar, thank you so much. I only got the, uh, the chats up. I haven't seen that much. So, Czar, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. What else we got? Like and subscribe, like and subscribe. Real quick question. I'm trying out a new router today. And of course, I like to do everything new. So I get a new router and I, and I try with that. And then also I try to do a live stream, the first one, and see how that's going. So how much lag do we have? Let me know in the comments section. That should be good. Crypto 6, but I sold two already. That's a pretty good idea. Chris by bike. Welcome back. Usually you see me on Theta, now you see me over here. So Chris by bike says that uh, the Winklevoss twins says uh, 75,000 for Ethereum. Yeah, I mean, it could, but the thing is, we know these things will go very high. We know that Bitcoin will go up and Ethereum and Cardano and everything else. We know it will really take over just like the internet took over. But the big question always is when. When is that, is that actually going to happen? And uh, I think that is the bigger question. Is it going to be this bull run or is it going to be the next four year cycle? That's the big question. All right. So let me jump back here. Burp. So here's one of my things. One of the things that I'm concerned about. And that is this. I don't know if anybody, everybody's seen this, but the CME and the CBOE, the CBOE, Chicago. <sighs> Chicago Mercantile Exchange, that's it. They are going to launch uh, futures in quarter two for Ethereum. And I was talking to uh, Alex, Alex Masioli over on his channel, and uh, all those guys are, you know, traditional markets, uh, institutional players, and they're really excited about this. They're ecstatic. They, they, they can't wait till uh, this all goes live, which it looks like it's going to have uh, the second quarter. So you're looking at uh, uh, April, May, June, somewhere around there. Uh, for this to get launched for uh, Ethereum. Uh, plans to be futures contracts in Ethereum. So if you've been around a while, some of you have been around since uh, 2012, 2011, some of you have been around since uh, 2019. What, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the thing is you have to remember is this. 
This could be great, but I will just give you a little quick history lesson about what happened for the futures contracts with the CME. Uh, this was on December 18th, 2017. Uh, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, CME, launched their futures contract for Ethereum. And everybody, or I'm sorry, for Bitcoin, 2017. And everybody was super excited, super excited about this. Like, oh, this is great. Finally, all the institutions are here. The on-ramps are in place. We can never go down. That was the big thing. We can never go down. And guess what it did? So let's just take a look at what happened during that time. So here we are, November 2017, roughly when I got in, right around 10,000, 9,000, 10,000. Everybody's happy. Going up, up, up. 9th of December, 15.8. 10 December, 17.1. That was a pretty good day, huh? 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15th of December, 2017. And then the 16th and the 17th and the next day, CME launched their futures with Bitcoin. And this is what happened. But that's okay. It's only a 14,000. It'll go up. And it did. 16, 6, and then did this. That's, it'll go up. And, da, 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 and there we go. So... Again, I don't know exactly what's going to happen. I just know I can tell you what happened in, in the past. Maybe it was due for it. Maybe it was because of those four-year cycles that we're always talking about. Having all-time high dip reset. Having all-time high dip reset. Maybe it was just a natural occurrence. Maybe it had nothing to do with the futures contract. I'm not for sure, but uh, that is where we are at. And uh, it just concerns me, especially with quarter two. So again, um, there was this, it was a great podcast. It was with uh, Tim Ferriss. He wrote The 4-Hour Workweek, uh, The Tools of Titans. He's got his own podcast, pretty good. And he was talking about Bitcoin today on his podcast. And uh, he had one of his, uh, one of his man managers for his capital group. And they were talking about it, about where it is going to go. And Tim had a pretty good point. He says, everybody I meet that's been in cryptocurrency pretty much been the same thing. They, they tell me how much money they've made in cryptocurrency. They say they're really into it. They can't really explain it too well, but they're really into it. And uh, they're really excited and they think that I should get into it. He goes, the first question I always ask him is this, when it went up to that high, how much did you sell? And they always say, almost always say, I, did, I didn't sell. I still hold on. Okay, well, when it went down, when did you sell? Oh, no, I didn't do that either. I just held on. And then when it went down, I just held on. And I think throughout all the different channels, you're going to see a lot of different things on YouTube, and it's a wide swath. And again, remember, it's all about what you want to do. If you want to, if you're, you know, just want to hold, just want to hold forever and say, I've got my Bitcoin, I've got my Ethereum, I've got my tomato coin, and I just, uh, you know, this is it. I'm going to do this, uh, and it works out for you, then sure, you can hold forever. And whatever, you know, maybe you can, it becomes a new world reserve currency. I have no idea. Uh, but then some people will be like, you know what, maybe, maybe I want to sell a little bit. And then the question then becomes, which I get a lot of is, well, why would you even sell? Why would you ever do that? Let me, let me clo do a close up. Why would I ever do that? Why would I do a, a, any kind of selling when I can just take a huge loan out and I can just live off the loan, right? Well, the thing is with that, When you take a loan out, I mean, you have collateral, all your collateral, whatever that could be, let's say Ethereum, right? And you want to have, you want to take out a $100,000 loan, okay? So uh, right now you would need, well, for 100,000, uh, you would need roughly uh, 200 Ethereum because right now each Ethereum is worth 1,000. So math, you know, not too bad. And if you do something like that, uh, that'll work out okay. But what happens when it's, when it's collateralized? and you just have the money, and you're trying to live off it, but you hit this major dip after that. And then you get liquidated. Where does the money come from? Well, you have to give all that money back. And then guess what else? You have to liquidate all the rest of your cryptocurrency. So I'm not really too keen on that idea. Uh, we did a couple of videos about what, uh, what I'm going to do, which is invest into more land and properties, uh, because it's kind of like the, what we'd like to do uh, for that. But uh, for me personally, I think it all comes out of this. Find out where you think your cryptocurrency is going. Start to think about how much percentage you should sell. And then think about if you want to sell all of it or if you want to sell partial or just a little bit. But at some point, even my friend Mullet tells me, Rob, 
you need to take profits at some point. And I'm like, I'm going to do that. And then what happens? I don't do it. So this was the first year I actually started to do that. And uh, thanks, everybody, for trying and uh, getting it through my thick head to do that. I appreciate it. All right. So that is it. So let me go back. <laughs> so let me go back and, uh, and uh, take a look at what I missed. All right. Hello, everyone. Little lag. 